Hello everybody, we are going to be talking about the New York Islanders today and why I think that their future doesn't look that great. Now before we start, I wanted to say please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are new to me, new to hockey, whatever the case may be, I'd love to have you here along the way. Now let's get to it. And this really comes down to a lot of people just realizing where New York's future probably lies and kind of ties into the Bo Horvat trade talk. Now this is not just because they made the Bo Horvat trade that their future looks a little bit murky. In fact, it is just part of this bigger thing surrounding the Isles. But I do think that this is a problem and I want to talk about why their future doesn't look the best. So for starters, they missed the playoffs last year, currently are not in a spot to make it this year. I look at that and I see a problem because if you're spending a lot of money um, and you are a team that has aspirations to be not only a playoff team but a team capable of making a run or two, you really don't want to miss playoff at all but consecutive years. That's a problem. To me, that is kind of a sign that maybe just maybe this team is on the back hill of what they're hoping for and that is not going to be ideal. That paired with the fact that they are the fourth oldest team in the league by average age with multiple old guys that call Paul Mary and Brock Nelson getting minutes. This is a little worrying. And yeah, you know, these guys aren't 38 or anything like that. But you look at some of these other teams that you have these up and coming teams, you know, like the Buffalo Sabres, Detroit Red Wings, teams like that, where they have these guys that are younger and look to be the future of the league. I don't look at New York and say, yeah, this is by far the future of the league. This is where the the hockey world is going to be based around as of right now. Now, for older guys getting a lot of minutes, that's not really a big issue for me. Like I've said before, if you've got a guy like Joe Pavelski that really has been a revelation for Dallas since he's been there, that's awesome. That's great. And if he's older and still able to play, absolutely go for it. But if you have these long deals and these guys aren't producing up to these deals, that's when I start to hit the panic button. And there's really just a lot of more issues with this because, yeah, while these guys are old, you're hoping maybe there's some reinforcements coming along. Not really. In terms of exciting prospects, the team by uh, prospect ranking, if you want to rank the farm, the hockeywriters.com did a ranking and had them 27th out of 32 teams in the league. And they are not the only ones to have them lower down there. I know some people might be like, oh, what qualifies them? If you go to other places and you look at their rankings, New York is certainly not a top 10 for the forum system right now. And in fact, the hockeywriters.com also listed that two weeks ago, they only had two top 100 prospects in the prospect rankings. And their number one prospect, that being Alturati, is now with the Vancouver Canucks after the Bo Horvat trade. So you're looking at that and saying, well, out of all 100 prospects that they ranked, two of them were in the top 100. And their best prospect, which was by far a lot of people consider their best prospect, is now going on to another team. Another problem is too, there's not a lot of high-end talent coming up in the ranks that is, you know, these first round guys, which I kind of talked about there with the prospect rankings. But if New York does not have a first round pick in this year's draft, if they don't, you know, find a way to get one this year, that'll be the fourth straight season without a first round pick for them. You know, this is not a recipe for success. If you are a team that is winning Stanley Cups, maybe you make a move to where you give up your first round picks. New York is not in the position they were two years ago, or maybe they would have felt a little bit more emboldened. And now they're making moves that are a little bit more concerning because the whole thing could just cave in right now. If these old guys just fall off a cliff, they really just would not be in a great spot because there is no quality talent or at least that expected talent because you look at guys yeah you can absolutely nail great picks in the third fourth fifth blah 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 but at the end of the day your best shot to get that top end talent is in the first round if your scouts are good which they should be so that's a big question for me i don't exactly know what's going to happen here paired with that the Ilya sorokin dependency which is starting to become a little bit of a worry for me sorokin having a dominant season this year for the islanders and is set to become a ufa in 2024 a guy like him pair him with another great season maybe next year and he's set to become an unrestricted free agent that's a recipe for disaster because this team right now too is not looking like the team under barry trotz keep the shots out wide limit the chances all that stuff blah 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 they are looking like a team that is really relying on their goalie to help them out. And yeah, Sorokin's done a great job doing that, but they've got some money issues. And on top of that, 
you know that he's going to ask for a pretty penny if he replicates this season, next season, or a season like this. And there's going to be plenty of suitors, so they want to be able to lock up a deal before him. Well, that's just going to exacerbate the problem because he knows he could probably force a little bit of their hand and get a better deal. But we will see. Now, as for the Bo Horvat stuff, no doubt Bo is a guy that I look at and think that he could make this team better in the short term, at least offensively. Uh, but again, giving up a first rounder and a top prospect for them, especially if he's a rental, could be a big overpay and just a sign of what's going wrong lately in New York. And while, again, they are not a terrible team, I do think that this team's future is pretty bleak if things continue on the trend where they're at, but we will see. Do you think that the Islanders' future is as bad as some people are making it out to be, or do you think that they'll just be fine in five years and, again, being a competitive club that is right in the thick of it for a playoff push? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night. And go love Hulk. You all right? Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.